Okay, so first question, just an easy one. What does a day in the life of the governor entail? A uh, day in the life of the governor entails lots of meetings, lots of decisions, but primarily getting out and talking to people. That's at least the, the day that I like. Okay, but it's not like that every day, I'm guessing. No, it's varied really. Um, sort of one day I can be chairing the executive council, another day I can be meeting some of the people that work for me, another day I can be out talking to school children. So it's really, really different all the time. And you enjoy all aspects of it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love it here, love it. Okay, so how does the Governor of St Helena, Ascension and Tristan de Cunha's role differ to that of the Governor of an overseas territory where there is a Chief Minister? The Chief Minister in another territory, as far as I can gather, is a bit more like a Prime Minister. Mm. So, uh, in the UK, I know the Prime Minister represents all the Ministers. So, here, that's not the case. We don't have a part opposition party, so it's just uh, independent elected members. Okay, this is perhaps a bit of a more contentious one. Why did you depart the island after less than 100 days on St. Helena? Okay, um, I went on holiday in uh, August, actually the 31st of July. Yeah. Um, so I've come here from Kenya, I had a couple of weeks in the UK, uh, but they were all working and briefing, and I decided to go home for a summer holiday to see my family who I hadn't met. Uh, for very long and then when I came back I came back for Ascension and I did five days on Ascension which was my first working trip to Ascension. How did you find Ascension? I thought it was fabulous um, really it was an island with a purpose it was a, everyone talks about Ascension as being a working island and I could really see that um, you know, during the day there's no one out on the streets because everybody's hard at work <laughs> And um, in the evening, everyone's relaxing from their hard day at work. So I just thought it was like nowhere else I've been, actually. Okay. All right, so next one. Mm -hmm. Why does SHD keep saying that they'll keep us informed on the airport, yet refuse to give us straight answers to questions? So the airport obviously is uh, on the top of everybody's uh, list. What's, what's happening, what's not, not happening. Um, the straightforward answer is we're in a period where we're collecting information yeah. and that's not actually that interesting unless you, you're uh, someone that knows a lot about weather and data. Now I do know a bit about what, what's going on um, and so every time a plane lands we're collecting pilots reports and we're collecting wind information from there. There's all kinds of weather in, uh, instruments up at the airport and uh, every day all the data is being collected uh, up there. On top of that, there's um, a computer that's looked at St Helena and has looked at where all the wind comes from and it's analysing what's causing wind shear. Uh, in addition, there's a... Um, a model of St Helena that's been put into a wind tunnel at a uh, university in the UK and that's all they're working out what's happening with wind shear there and then um, there's something called a lidar instrument out at the airport which uses remote sensing to also work out um, what's happening with the wind. Now I'm sure a MET person could tell you much more uh, from it than that, but that's my understanding. Mm. But really, until we have enough data, uh, because this is a safety issue, you can't really rush it. So mm. until we have enough data, I can't tell you when that will be. Um, we're, we're not really gonna have anything else to say. Would you say you regret, you regret taking on the role of Governor of St. Helena in wake of these uh, wind shear issues? No, not regret, but I must say when I, I was on the RMS, um, when we got the news that the implementation flight had uh,
taken three, well, two landings, and that's when the wind shear had been discovered. And like I'm sure everybody on the island, um, I was just disappointed because I knew that it wouldn't be, you know, the way that my being a governor here, the way I'd envisaged it wasn't actually going to be how it was. But for me, it's just another challenge. You know, we'll get there. That's the important thing to remember. We will get there. At no point will the island be left without access. We will always have the RMS or a plane. I just can't tell you when we'll be able to switch from one to the other. Okay. A lot of young people particularly leave the island to find work overseas. What would you say is sort of encouraged more young people to try and stay on sex or would you encourage them to stay? I'm not a great believer in trying to force people to stay in one particular place or another. The world exists on migrants everywhere. Uh, migrants um, send back money, which I think is a really important role, not only for the person who's overseas, but also for the place that they're sending it back to. So I think it's our responsibility to try and make St Helena a place where people either want to stay or want to come back to. But everybody makes personal decisions and I think that's fine. I actually think that a lot of people go um, away from St Helena, they perhaps go to uni, they build up more experience and then they come back and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of a follow up from that. What would you say to young people who perhaps want to get more involved in politics at St. Helena? I'd say, I'd say go for it, definitely. How would we make it easier for them? Uh, well, we've just had a, a young politician come on to uh, LegCo, which is really good news. Um, I want to see if we can um, encourage employers to uh, let people go and be councillors, maybe part-time. We don't always have to have council meetings, for example, nine till five. You know, can we look at having council meetings later in the evening so that people can do more than one thing? Apparently, this is how it used to be. Um, so, um, on Ascension, I've just introduced uh, flexible working for councillors there, so I don't see why we can't do that here. And I know that can be a barrier to some people. You know, if they've got a job or they have a career, they don't want to be a counsellor or they don't want to put a pause on their career. But I really want to see if we can find a way to make that happen. Okay. Uh, one last one for me. This sort of relates back to the airport issue. What would you say to the young saints who've now set their career paths in the hospitality industry, they've gone to university and they've got the qualifications, they're back on St. Helena, but we're not quite ready for them yet. So we will be ready at some point, that's my main message. Mm -hmm. But I think there's more that we can do to make, to maximise the tourism we get. So I would like to see, uh, so the, the yachts that come in, we have 800 yachts a year apparently come in. Do we, how, what's the hospitality industry doing for them? Mm -hmm. um, we have cruise ships coming in. We have, still have a, um, a lot of tourists coming in on the RMS. So we already have a tourism industry. I think we should be making more of it. Okay, that's all from me. Um, just last one for me. Is there anything that you would like to add in this time? About anything? Hmm. <laughs> the thing I'm... Most, I want to talk about a couple of the things that I've been most proud of, if that's all right. Um, so the things that I've been most proud of since I've come here, um, first of all, it's got to be the medivac of the baby, baby Eli, uh, which the whole island just came together to get that baby out. And I strongly believe the baby would not have survived if we hadn't have um, had the airport open. So I, I only did a very small bit and everybody else did much more than me, but I think that was a real sort of point of history for St Helena. 
Um, and then I'm really proud actually of being able to open up Plantation House. I've loved doing my Governor's Sunday Teas, which recognises a lot of people on the island that aren't usually recognised. Mm -hmm. And so many people say to me they've never been to the house and they will get a tour of the house if they come up for a tea. So I just really am enjoying and I'm proud to open up the house.